Hello everybody, my name is Chris Heyer, also known as Pinpoint. Uh, today what we're going to do is, I'm actually working on a, a bit of a song right now, where uh, all of the song has to utilize the, uh, uh, well, I should say, one piece of equipment. Um, and that piece of equipment can be used for multiple tracks uh, and stuff. And so I've already created kind of the baseline, well, not baseline, but the, bit, the, the basic mock-up, or first draft, I guess, uh, of the full song that I'm going to be working on for, for a course that I was doing. Um, but uh, with that song, I was using a combination of instruments, mostly using the Strobe 2 software synthesizer, but I was also using um, uh, Arturia's um, basically a virtual piano, and uh, I also have a drum kit that I put together from a few samples that I downloaded from, uh, from Splice. But uh, what has to happen with this song is uh, I have to basically remaster all of the tracks to be using sounds from one device. And in this case, I'm using my Novation Summit. Now, the Novation Summit's actually a really, really cool synthesizer. It's one of my favorites. Um, next to, say, the Polybrute. I haven't played around with a whole lot of synthesizers, but uh, but I really like, uh, like a lot of the polyphonic uh, synthesizers. And the really nice thing that I like uh, about this is there's so many knobs on it. Everything is so tactile. I can work with it um, without having the menu dive so much like you would have to do with, say, um, a Modi X6 if you want to, or, or 7 or 8 or whatever. This is the Modi X or the Montage if you're wanting to kind of get a little more in-depth with uh, with FM synthesis um, or, say, like the, the Virus Polar or TI, uh, TI2. While there are a lot of knobs uh, on there, a significant amount of its functionality is hidden away within uh, within menus. Whereas with the Summit, um, most of its functionality is right here, right on the face. Um, there there are some things that you can do with the mod matrix and things like that. Um, but what we're going to work on today is uh, we're going to work on an arpeggio. Um, so we're going to actually start from an init patch. So. So basic saw wave, single oscillator, nothing fancy, no effects. This is as soon as you hit the init button, like as soon as I, if I decide to mess around and I hit init, we're back. So we'll be starting from there. Uh, the other thing that I'll also be doing is, uh, so I've already got uh, a small chord progression queued up within Ableton. So if I play that... So, actually that's not quite the chord, I'll just move it over um, just a little bit. There we go. There we go. That sounds better. Um, so if we notice, uh, it, it's basically running a full four key chord, but the nice thing with synthesizers is we got what's called an arpeggio, or arpeggiator. Um, so that's what we're going to do. As a matter of fact, the first thing that we're going to do with this patch is we're going to turn the arpeggiator on. And we're going to make sure that we're just default setup, single octave. It's just going to go up. So we've got that. Now I want to make sure that we are in sync with our song, at least the BPM wise. So within Ableton, I usually check, make sure... Uh, I have sync enabled, which it is. And so now we should be able to continue. We're at 127 BPM. Worst case, I will ensure that we are at 127. So if I go to our ARP clock, we'll go 127. If I hit play. So, yeah, let's uh, let's fiddle around. Uh, so now we got the arpeggio going. Uh, let's see how it goes on an up down. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Now 
we'll stick with the up. So I'm just going to turn the volume down here so I'll be able to kind of talk as I'm, I'm messing around. So I'm not 100% certain what direction I want to take. Right now we're just on a saw wave. So let's let's just play around and see what we can go. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll throw a uh, triangle wave on and we'll start kind of messing around with our amp, amp envelope and see where we can get from there. yet. Actually, I wouldn't mind seeing what a little chorus will do. <laughs> that actually sounds kind of cool. I like that. Uh, what if we throw a little delay in there? Now, I want to sync the delay. So basically tie it to the BPM. So what do I want? Maybe eight. Let's see where that gets us. Ooh, I like that. Synthesizer. Now let's bring that sub back in. Or maybe let's keep that at the same octave. I love how that's ringing. Let's see what the resonance gives us. Okay. 
Actually, so, so one thing I wouldn't mind trying here. So, so I've got the output set up, so I've got, uh, there's, the main output's got the primary sound, and then the uh, auxiliary output's got the actual effects channel. And one of the reasons that I do that, it's a bit of a workaround uh, to a bug within the synthesizer itself. And so the bug is that I can actually bring down the wet level and see our filter uh, sounds kind of, well not filter, the effects stage kind of start to die down in the sound, but if I bring the wet level, or bring the dry level down, then everything comes down. So the workaround is a, within the settings on the synthesizer, I can have a primary uh, sound coming out the mains, and then I can get the effects sounds coming uh, off the, uh, uh, the auxiliary. So what that'll do for us is now I can just cut, kind of go down on the mixer here. So if I bring that volume back up, I'm gonna make this a lot more wet and see how it sounds. So you've kind of gotten rid of some of the, the, the harsher up front. It's quieted a bit, like we run it like it's a bit harsh up front. We may or may not want that, but if we bring that down. Well, I gotta change the settings again. So yeah, we already see a bit of a difference here. So now I can bring that down. At least doing that, we get a better idea as to what our delay is doing, and if we really kind of like that. So I like a little bit of delay, just, yeah, it doesn't need that much. Try the different reverbs here. So this will go kind of a wider area. So now that we got that reverb up a bit, let's uh, bring our dry up. I like that sound. Um, yeah, that sounds really nice so far. Uh, what else should I do? And so I'm going to use Oscillator 3. I want to use that as a sub oscillator. Just because I do like that. down a bit. So I'm going to lower the cutoff frequency, but I'm going to increase the amount that the amp envelope affects that filter. Let's try something different. Like, every so often, like, the low pass filter is a very common filter to use uh, on subtractive synthesis, but every so often it's like, you know what, let's try high pass and see, uh, see what we can get off of that. So I'll switch it over to high pass. See, that's actually quite cool.
So what I'm essentially doing is now I've got the, the high pass, so if I run the cutoff frequency at a higher level, you're going to get more of the high frequency stuff, but that means if I want a little low level stuff, now I can reverse the uh, effect of the amp envelope on, uh, on the filter cutoff. So like this is with zero effect on it. This is the effect that it had when I was running uh, the low pass. So yeah, very chimey. It sounds really cool. But I mean, you could, theoretically, as part of the song, um, use the envelope depth as something that you can modulate in this. So. Which might not actually be a bad idea, because in the song itself, when I get that arpeggio coming in, um, it starts off at a low volume and kind of works its way up, but this kind of makes it interesting if I were to say, let's, uh, yeah, let's go into the mod matrix, and I'll take the mod wheel, and we'll assign it to filter envelope depth, let's see, filter dry. I'm hoping I can actually do that. I actually don't think I can modulate that. Filter frequency separation, pan position. Play holes. Yeah, I don't think I can modulate that. I might have to actually manually do that. Neither here nor there. Can have a cool drop there too, but uh, yeah, no, I, I really like how that's sounding. And so I guess next I want to kind of mess around with the oscillators a little bit. Um, let's keep the key sync on. The reason the key sync it just means that the oscillators are going to start at the same uh, same angle every time a key is hit. Um, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll keep it on. If you notice when I have it on, because everything's starting at the same time, I will seem to get this little click that hits at the beginning of every note, and I don't want that. I want I want some drift um, in the, the synchronization of the oscillators. So you can hear that's already kind of changed out a little bit. Uh, let's see what happens if I add a little diverge. I'll leave that for a bit. So, okay, so it's still trying on oscillator one. So what I want to do is see what uh, what I can do with a little bit of saw density on oscillator two. So that's just going to kind of beef up that sound a little bit. Yeah, you can, you can hear that coming up there. Bit of detune. So there's no detune there, but bring it up just a bit. Doesn't need to go that high. I like the density. And now that we come here, we'll bring that back down. It's just a question of how much of that triangle I want in there. I don't know if I'm sold on that, that part of the sound, though. I mean, it is cool. I haven't created that sound before.
but just because of the shape, it almost sounds like it's a little off tune. But maybe that's just the diverge. Uh, let me let me reset that. No, that doesn't make much of a difference. Yeah, it doesn't work very well with the saw, I think. So what I'm doing here, so with that triangle I was kind of messing around with the shape, but one of the cool things that I can do here is I can also um, modulate the shape of the triangle, which if you, if you really want to kind of get a little creative with it is to you know, apply either some LFO or your mod envelope. Uh, in this case what I've done is I've uh, applied uh, mod envelope 1 now to the shape, so I kind of found a, a place where I would like. That, that sound to end up, and then I can go into my mod envelopes. What I've done is I've got basically zero, zero attack, a little bit of delay or decay, zero sustain, zero release. Actually, let's up that release a little bit. There we go. And I can kind of run them simultaneously. So you can hear how that's affecting the sound. That's really nice. Actually, oh, I actually really like that. I still kind of have some spaciness. Let's let's close that reverb up a touch. Now I'm kind of running reverb max level. Like, I really want the reverb to come out in this one. Let's see what that delay is sounding like, too. But I know one of the main things with uh, uh, with the firmware 2.0 update on the Summit is uh, Novation has kind of uh, added some more different effects that run on the core stage. So now I can actually run like a like a phaser or phalanger uh, on it as well. But I, I can also do some other adjustments to the course as well. So like right now, yeah, you can kind of hear the effect of that course. I can I really up the rate so you can hear. Um, you know, kind of that, that frequency movement across the spectrum happening like really fast, whereas before I was just kind of moving it slowly. But if we bring it quickly, you get some of that effect, but let's just kind of reduce the depth on that a bit. So, so we still get that funky, you know, back and forth effect, but the, the intensity, the, the depth on, on that course isn't quite as intense uh, anymore there. Let's see if we, what happens if we add some feedback. I yeah, don't need too much of that. Get some. What if I switch it over to Flanger? Or Flanger. That's actually kind of neat. I like that one. Kind of playing with low pass, high pass on the course. I haven't messed around with it too much, but given how we've now like settled on the high pass um, for our main filter, I'm kind of curious as to where we go with this. So 
so something I want to try. So I've got a saw wave right now on oscillator three, which I'm currently using one octave below um, oscillators one and two. So you can hear that right there. So I'm going to change that to a sine wave. with the shape, see where we go. Uh, I'll keep that. Uh, let's, let's see what happens if we go square wave. Gotta love the square wave. If you're in a class at video games, NES all the way, right? Uh, let's uh, modify that a little. square wave, you're basically uh, doing pulse width modulation. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to find a good area in the modulation that, uh, or at least in the pulse width, that makes the, uh, that makes the oscillator just kind of fit with the rest of the sound. I, I, I do like, like I, I'm a huge fan of sub-oscillation. Um, really kind of gives you some richer tones, like even when I do more super saw style sounds, I'll, I'll usually run a highly dense oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 with oscillator 2 slightly detuned from oscillator 1, but each of the oscillators will have its own detuning as well. Um, oscillator 3 I'll generally just keep on pitch, but then I'll go into the oscillator settings and increase density, detune, and that's that. And then I would go into my voices and actually, without telling, I'll actually try that on this because this is another thing I like to do to try and beat things up a little bit uh, with the sounds. If I go to the voices, I can add unison. And so I don't know if you can see it right now, but I've only got every ton of keys. No, only one of those lights is lighting up, so one of those lights is one voice. So if I add a second one, now you can see there's two voices per note that are lighting up. And the sound noticeably changes. But I can also spread it, so now we can get... So this is one of the biggest reasons that I like, uh, like Unison. Is you can spread the sound to actually take up more space. Um, so each voice is going to kind of be more in one side and, and the other side. So, if you don't want it to sound overly big, like right now there's just a little bit of detune on it, so maybe I want both of them to sound fairly similar. So, now you can kind of hear, yeah, I mean, especially if you're wearing headphones, there's still width to it, but it doesn't sound like it's a much bigger sound, and I don't have to, like, do, you know, pan movement. With the, with the sound to try and get it to take up some of that space. But if I add just a little bit of detune, like not even that much, you can see, like, this is no detune. And then one, two, three. You can already hear it starting to increase in size. Yeah, like, I almost think like six or seven is just perfect. Because then we get. Now it starts sounding a little too detuned, and when I'm trying to keep more of that crisp um, chiming sound in there, it, it, it kind of goes away a little bit. So yeah, I, I like it at six. I like my two voices at six. Let's do a full, full spin. So I'm gonna pre glide. You know what? While I'm here, let's see how this sounds if I add a little bit of drive to it. I know it's probably not the most appropriate, but 
It's a beautiful thing about sound design on synthesizers like this. It's like, it's, let's see where it goes. I just want to kind of play around and uh, experiment a bit and uh, see where, uh, where our sound's going to wind up. If, it, if I don't like it, I'll just go back. Not a big deal. It's a lot better when you're kind of playing around with uh, with saws and you know more leads and, and stuff like that. It's that, that really uh, kind of gives you that overdriven distortion and stuff. Uh, I know well, I, I do have distortion I can use. But yeah, now you can really hear that distortion hitting. Which for the nature of the sound that I'm trying to make, not the most appropriate, but it's there. You know, in case you want to, right? So I'm just kind of messing around with the resonance, the decay release on the modulation envelope. Yeah, so now it's, it's kind of the point where I, where I like where it's at. I know there's a few modifications that I'd like to do with it, um, but... Uh, but the sound is kind of... It's pretty close to where I want to be. Um, so kind of the plan is uh, I'll, I'll continue working on different patches for the different layers. Uh, these are by no means final. Uh, so they are, they are going to get recorded into to Ableton. And then when I hear them in the context with a lot of the other sounds that I'm creating, that's when I'll be able to kind of go back uh, to some of these patches I'm making and saving and either make tweaks to them or say, you know what, I am not a huge fan of how... How that patch is uh, really working uh, within uh, within the whole context of the song. Maybe I just want to completely start from scratch and and come up with something new. But uh, yeah, no, I'd l uh, love to do some more of these uh, these videos um, of just basically working with my summit. Uh, I'll I'll work with other synthesizers too down the road. But for now, the focus is going to be on the summit because I'm going to be creating a lot of sound for this song. Uh, with just this synthesizer and, and I love being able to do patches from scratch uh, There's so much you can do. I haven't really touched a whole lot on uh, on various modulation options. I know um, A fantastic guy to check out Ricky Tinez uh, also works with Novation um, I've watched a lot of his stuff. He does some phenomenal work with uh, with really maximizing the capabilities of your modulation within the summit and the Novation peak which you know very similar in sound and capabilities um, but uh, yeah, no, if you enjoyed watching this video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Uh, let me know your thoughts. This is the first video I've released. I'm going to do some more of these as I, uh, as I continue on through. But I uh, hope you enjoy, and we'll catch you later.